What up techies? On September 25th, Voyager 1 made a shocking discovery that rocked the space industry. While flying through the outermost region of our solar system, the spacecraft discovered a giant cloud of dust and gas twice Earth's size. This is the first time such a large cloud has been observed in this part of space, and scientists are still trying to figure out what it means. Some believe that the cloud could be debris from a recently destroyed planet, while others think it might be evidence of a previously unknown planetary system. Regardless of its origin, this discovery shows that our solar system is even more mysterious than we thought. And with Voyager 1 still on its journey to interstellar space, who knows what else it will find. More than four decades after launch, the Voyager 2 spacecraft continues to function in the harshest imaginable condition of deep space, sending back amazing and even terrifying discoveries to the mission controllers on Earth. One of these discoveries was a huge wall of fire when Voyager 2 crossed the boundary of our solar system, which was a terrifying sight for the mission controllers. Although these rockets only work in short bursts, and will ultimately run out of fuel. One fascinating feature is that they have a backup system in place. The fuel is hydrazine. The primary thrusters had been in use for 37 years before NASA decided to switch to the backups, which had been inactive for almost 40 years. The backups, however, performed well in the pitch blackness of space, where not even sunlight could reach them. At a distance of 119 from the sun, Voyager 2 became the second spacecraft ever to enter interstellar space. 1O is the distance between the Sun and the Earth, roughly 93 million miles. This was accomplished by Voyager 1 many years before Voyager 2 could have because it required fewer detours. While Voyager 1 made flybys of Uranus and Neptune, Voyager 2 was the first to sample the electrically charged hazes or plasmas that occupy stellar space and the solar system's furthest reaches. With its advanced technology, Voyager 2 was able to study solar winds. Aspects of plasma physics, such as particle composition and behavior in cosmic ray interaction, magnetic field orientation, and other characteristics that mark the planetary boundaries the discoveries of Voyager 2 into interstellar space have helped us learn a lot about the boundary of the solar system while showing us entirely new things. It has also challenged some ideas we had about the boundary before. The solar wind creates a bubble within the galactic medium, which we call the heliosphere. This protective barrier stretches out to 11 billion miles from our sun at its leading edge, and encompasses not just ourselves, but eight other planets. The most interesting thing about this incredible spacecraft, though, it has an outermost border known simply by name, the Sheliopos. The output tone should know this can help us picture our sun's journey through the galaxy, and it can also shed light on the circumstances of other stars strewn across the cosmos, which is why scientists were so eager to see what would happen when Voyager 2 crossed it. It is important to note that some instruments on Voyager 1 stopped working before they crossed the boundary, so we could not follow its progress during this time. Before Voyager 1 passed through the Heliopos, it sped through interstellar particle tendrils that had punched into the heliopores like tree roots through rock. Still, when it came to Voyager 2, the spacecraft encountered a trickle of low-energy particles that extended more than 100 million miles beyond the heliopores, confirming a theory that the Heliopos is a leaky border in both directions. As Voyager 1 approached the Heliopause, it traversed a limbo-like region where the outward solar wind slowed to a crawl before crossing the Heliopause, adding to the mystery. The solar wind, as observed by Voyager 2, formed a new type of layer about as wide as the stationary layer observed by Voyager 1. The sun constantly spits out shock waves of plasma known as coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, which participate in shaping the rest of the solar system. However, Voyager 2 data showed the way CMEs propagate beyond the Heliopause and create the effect of lowering the amount of cosmic rays beyond the bubble. This is somewhat similar to what you might find in the galaxy, where supernova send shock waves of plasma hurtling through the galaxy. Improving our picture of the heliosphere is essential to unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. Since there is no data on the heliosphere's wake, we have yet to figure out the overall shape. For all we know, the interstellar medium's pressure might maintain the heliosphere roughly spherically, or it might have a tail like a comet or be shaped like a quasa. The Voyagers aren't the only spacecraft in motion, but they're headed out of the solar system and out of radio contact. Their data will never be returned. Fortunately, NASA fitted each Voyager with three radioisotope thermoelectric generators RTGS mounted at the end of a boom. These are among the simplest possible forms of nuclear power. A radioactive brick is surrounded by many thermocouples that harvest energy from the disparity in temperature between the brick and the surrounding space. Both Voyager 1 and 2's RTG units run on plutonium-238. This isotope of plutonium decays only by producing alpha particles, which are absorbed within the RTG itself, 
and so do not irradiate the other electronics in the spacecraft. However, as time passes, the decay of the plutonium reduces the amount of power it produces, the brick gradually cools, and the efficiency of the thermoelectric generator gradually decreases. Plutonium-238 has a half-life of 87.7 years, meaning the spacecraft's photos of Jupiter and its moons, including Europa, Io, and Amalthea, were taken at this close range, and they are quite breathtaking. Although Voyager 1 had previously surveyed these moons, Voyager 2 was able to get within 127 kilometers of Europa. Voyager 2's closest approach to Jupiter was at a range of 400 kilometers on the planet's clouds, where it took 17,500 new pictures of the gas giant and its newly discovered four moons and ring system. We have been able to map at least 80% of the surfaces of Ganymede and Callisto to a resolution of about 3 miles or 5 kilometers, thanks to the combined cameras of the two Voyagers. Remember the Pioneer spacecraft, it too had flown by Jupiter, and it detected few atmospheric changes from one encounter to the second. Two hours after its closest approach to Jupiter, Voyager 2 made a course correction and sped off in the direction of Saturn. The new trajectory was decided by a decision made in January 1981 to send the spacecraft to Uranus and Neptune later in the decade. Voyager 2 began its imaging of the moon Iapetus again two years after leaving the Jovian system. In August, when Voyager 1 came closest to this planet, it captured photographs of the ring spokes and kinks in the F-ring and its shepherding moons. After the Saturn flyby, the Voyager 2 scan platform got stuck and wouldn't move. The data it collected suggested that Saturn's ring was perhaps only about 980 feet or 300 meters thick as the probe flew behind and up past the planet. During this time, the probe traveled through the plane of Saturn's rings at 8 miles per second, or 13 kilometers per hour. In January of 1986, at a distance of around 50 light years, the Voyager 1 spacecraft discovered 10 new moons. These 10 moons were given names like Puck, Porsche, Juliet, and Cressida. The spacecraft also detected high velocity winds on Uranus reaching up to 450 miles per hour, and evidence of a boiling ocean of water some 497 miles below the planet's surface. Images of Miranda, Obron, Ariel, Uriel, and Titania taken by Voyager 2 are equally stunning. After the rendezvous with Uranus, the spacecraft continued on to Neptune, which is approximately 4.3 billion miles from Earth. As the first human-made object to sail past the giant planet, Voyager 2 discovered six new moons, including Proteus, Larissa, and Despina. In addition to Galadia, Thalassa, and Need, the five new rings marked the end of Voyager 2's planetary encounters, which spanned an incredible 12 years in deep space, and nearly completed the planned initially grand tour of the solar system in terms of targets reached. Three of the four spacecraft sent beyond the solar system in the 1970s, Voyagers 1 and 2 and Pioneer 11, were traveling in the apparent path of the Sun's path in the Milky Way galaxy, and so were expected to arrive at the Heliopause before Pioneer 10 which was traveling in the opposite direction. This prompted NASA to rename the entire project the Voyager Interstellar Mission VIM formally. After 21 years in orbit, NASA shut down all but seven of the spacecraft's instruments in November 1998. These instruments continue to send data on ultraviolet and particle fields to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, including observations of a massive shockwave that erupted from the outer heliosphere in July 2001 and swept through the solar wind, speeding up charged particles along its path. By November 2017, Voyager 2 had traveled 10.8 billion miles, or 116.1670, from the Sun in the direction of the Constellation Telescopium, at a speed of 9.6 miles per second, or 15.4 kilometers per second relative to the Sun. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 passed the Voyager boundary where the solar wind from the Sun was blocked. Years before, on July 8, 2019, Voyager 1 had crossed it. With some controversy, however, Voyager 2's plasma instrument detected a sudden increase in particle density as protons, electrons, and other charged particles slammed into the instrument. The instrument also recorded temperatures of 30,000 to 50,000 Kelvin, successfully reactivating its trajectory correction maneuver thruster, which it last used during its 1989 encounter with Neptune. Voyager 2 will now utilize them to fine-tune the spacecraft's direction for the foreseeable future. For the same reason that Voyager 1 switched to its trajectory correction maneuver thrusters in January 2018, the spacecraft's deteriorating attitude control thrusters have been increasing the number of pulses they must fire to keep the antenna pointing at Earth. Mission engineers knew they needed a new strategy for handling the aging robots if they were to keep getting the highest quality scientific data from the edge of space. We have just scratched the surface of the Voyager's space journeys. Let's hear what you think of the Enduring Voyager mission and its discoveries in the comments section below.